Hi, I'm Dr. V. And I'm Dr. A. Two docs on a mission to answer your burning questions about burning sensations and all things science. This is What the Woo. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't even like... I, I, guys... The more male friends I have, the less I've had, if that makes sense. Like, Mm -hmm. the more male friends I've had that have just been single and, like, uh, just eventually just fuck their lives over with, like, whatever dumb modern male mythos logo shit they, like, read on um, has made me lose more friends. Like, the negging thing, which is just... It's disgusting. I think having two daughters, too, makes me think, like, dude, if I ever heard you talking to my daughter like that, I would beat the shit out of you. Like, there's no way in general you're going to have that conversation in front of me to my daughter, right. when she's old enough to date. No. No. And I don't know if that's yeah. just me because of, like, my my culture, I guess you could say, but I don't know any Hispanic father that would sit there and let their daughter get talked to like that. On that note, I have had this conversation uh-huh. because I have dated um, a handful of Hispanic men recently. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, how is that? And I was like, actually, it's been lovely. And yeah. they're like, wait, what? And I was like, because part of the culture is you respect <laughs> your fucking mom and yeah. you respect women. Yeah. And like, yes, there's a little bit of like machismo going on there. But when it really comes down to it. There is this baseline respect. You don't fuck over your women. Yeah. You don't. Um. You don't treat them with disrespect, and and you generally uh, appreciate them if what they, they do, do something for the nice family. for you. Yeah, it's yes. Just, it's the weight of what they hold in the family. Structure yeah. Things. Like I. I remember one guy. Uh, we were watching a movie on the couch, and I just subtly noticed that he was his, drying out old condoms. Well, there's that. Stop! Stop! Any clothespins? <laughs> no! I hate Does it get you! Any string? <laughs> I gotta turn these Marco, inside out. Marco, you're gonna have to edit a lot of shit. <laughs> 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 I noticed that his neck looked uncomfortable, and I grabbed a pillow and put it behind his head. Uh-huh. And he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, you seemed uncomfortable. And he's like, yeah, yeah but no one has ever noticed those things. No. Like, and... And it was honestly like if it was a white dude, he would have never even appreciated that. Like he would have been, been like, like, "Yeah, bitch, what yeah, took bitch? so long?" Yeah, exactly. And uh, get well, me a beer. Well, you could that sooner, shit, and then just like, <laughs> yeah, exactly made you to death till you went yeah, to sleep. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Fuckers. this pillow sucks. <laughs> no, yeah, you couldn't have found a better one. I know. Yeah, just like have goose feathers. What is it? Goose down, goose comfort down. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the shit. Yeah, I've never been like so like I haven't been illuminated so much with like just the shit that men do yeah like i think dating in your 40s brings out like you see all of the fucking shit now with a new perspective because i was last dating in my 20s when that whole idea of like toxic masculinity i read like the saddest story about that where this woman was interviewing um these guys like all the way through high school and into college where like a lot of them like they were normal kids, but like there's just so much of this pressure to be just a total asshole, and and I think a lot of them came from like wealthy, yeah, um, you know, Caucasian families, and that like that's so that's so like the scariest. Are you getting a fax? <laughs> I am, and now we all know I'm very very old because I've never seen a working fax machine like in or the last that it rings five like years. Like a phone, like that. Wow, you gonna answer it? <laughs> Some guy Hello? faxing us. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. I'm He's sick nagging of you. you through the fax machine. <laughs> yes. I'm sick of listening to those bitches drone on. Yeah. Okay, so my son is 14. And like that's like my worst fear uh, is that he yeah. turns out to be an asshole. Like, no, not my there's son. no possible He's way go down some that like a- boy is perfect. He will make some woman so fucking happy. He's and I'm lovely. sure like people will be like, beta cook. <laughs> I mean, he might until one day if he ever gets rejected. I, but it's not like anything mm. that's wrong with him. I think what happens is the world around him, the things he'll see and look up, <sighs> it influences all that. That's I think that's always my, my my biggest problem is like, especially in like last two years, it's like whole fucking, I get the philo- like the philosophy of like the Jordan Petersons of the world. I think the, the Joe Rogans of the world, though, have turned it into like steroid mush. 
You know, it's like right. how an ape would understand what a cell phone is because it makes noise. It's just yeah. like that shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that thing, that's what's happened is no one's ever taught a, a young man how to take rejection, if that makes sense. And I You're think right. like, you have yeah. a lot of these boys who Disa- don't. No disappointment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, I think that's the one thing you have to realize, too, is like, dude, there's fucking rejection on a daily basis. But I think for me, it's. How I grew up was, I grew up in like a bunch of broke neighborhoods. So uh, rejection is a part of a daily process. Yes. You know, you have to face it with like, oh, we don't have enough money. I got my clothes as a kid from a place called the Family Bargain Center, which was oh, just Oh, no, like, it's great. I, I did too. Yeah, yeah. As a white girl, I grew up in Lemon Grove, which is very poor yeah. and full of but non-whites. It, but yeah. it teaches you that like, you know what? I'm not the only person though. Because like when you see a giant bin of clothes that are a dollar, mm-hmm. you know, and they got blood stains and shit on them or whatever. <laughs> it's like, it makes you realize like, okay, I'm not the only person who's obviously dealing with something like this. There's like an entire neighborhood of people mm-hmm. or cities full of people like this. And I think what happens is guys now, what was that? Aaron, was it Aaron Rodgers or some shit? Oh. That one kid who went from Santa Barbara to Elliot. Elliot Rodgers. Yeah. Oh my God. He's But horrible. he was like the, he was like the incel manifesto guy. Yes. I right? don't know about but that's this. A guy, he that's published a, kid. a 14 page thing of why women owed him sex. Yeah. It's so interesting because I know like for me, being in my twenties, you know, like 20 years ago, we were talking about like when you listen to Love Lines, it was always about like having fun at the woman's expense and like the man was never ever rejected, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and you like internalize that, even when you're like, that's messed up, but you just sort of do. And I look yeah. at I have a 16 year old daughter, and these girls are like, oh hell no. Like they have Yes. No problems. You and it's have amazing. raised a badass sixteen-year-old mm-hmm. daughter. I'm gonna just say yeah. that TikTok has raised. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> like, I can't take that any credit. Girl, that girl, TikTok though, and Antifa has raised my daughter. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but she's smart. She's gorgeous, and she's empathetic, and also a badass. Like it's hard to have all of that. Yeah, and and she's and waiting everything. for the world to break them. <laughs> You know, and that's that's the thing is, you know, the world will break them. It's about us making sure that we're there to help with that. Like, not help break them, help fix it. Put them back together. (laughs) Yeah, but not fix it by just giving more gold stars and cookies. But it is is interesting to me that, like, sort of to your point about negging, like, I mean, people did it because it worked, right? Because you have... Like women who are conditioned for a very long time. It's the carrot of the stick. Like, right? this is the best I can get. I guess this is how it works. Mm-hmm. And so you have this new generation coming up, like, fuck you. And they just walk away. Yeah. But that, to your point, now that you, like, instead of thinking to myself, like, well, that didn't work, right? Then they get pissed off at, at the women. Mm-hmm. And so you have this it, now it's your fault. cycle of. Yeah. yeah. I didn't ask enough questions. Then I point out, I did ask questions. He gave inadequate responses. And then it's my fault for not pulling out adequate responses and asking follow-ups. And, but that, see, but that, that radical reaction to a rejection is what started school shootings to begin with. Right. Exactly. To be a thing. Like these two boys who were so rejected by girls who were like hooking up in a shower with each other because they were best friends. Like people also forget that part of the story too, where it was like, Male, what is it? Uh, not inequality, but I would say like um, insecurity uh-huh. is what brought them together. You know, and then you have a, you have a, you know, I wouldn't even say pair, pair of parents, but when you have a son, you have to take on that responsibility of like, okay, I have to teach my son that like the, the world doesn't really give a shit. Nor does it a, revolve around them. No, and it doesn't. Yeah. That's the biggest thing too is like, dude, the world doesn't stop because you're sad and <laughs> shit. Like you still have to go to work. Like, you still have to get shit done. And I think that's a difference in, in what kids are seeing now. I think even in this world of, like, the COVID thing, is like, everyone remember had their little mental breakdowns at the beginning of this. It's like, it's only because they weren't getting validated on a constant daily basis. Because now you weren't yeah. just special. The entire world was afraid. Not everyone who was self-diagnosing themselves with just being sad all day on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It was like, the entire world was like, look, dude, that's cool. I need to find toilet paper and beef. Right. <laughs> like... We, we we got broken down to our most basic needs. And I right. think what happened now in this world, too, is like these guys don't know what to do. Yeah. Because you can offer negging. You can offer being an asshole. You can feed into someone's daddy issues. But I think if you can't offer anything else outside of being an asshole, 
You're just going to be an abusive asshole. Right. So I have a question. Yes. Because you do a lot of this back and forth. Right? Like texting while you're deciding whether or not. Oh, when? Yes. Okay. So, you know, how like how many licks it takes to get to the center <laughs> of a Tootsie Roll Pop? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Here we go. Kiki. No, no, no. Hey. I didn't know we were exposing all of how, my truths. <laughs> how, how many, many licks does it take? How many texts does it take uh, to figure out if somebody's going to be a toxic asshole? How many pictures? Fuck. Oh, God. And and what is your end point? Like, what's the center of the Tootsie Roll? Like, obviously, it's the Tootsie Roll pop, yeah. right? It's like dick pic, game over, like, you know. Unless it's a good one. Really? Or it's like freakish. <laughs> or it's got I like mean, two heads on Is this on where it. we just segue into our new podcast and leave the dangling carrot? <laughs> dangling carrot? Nice. <laughs> also, I mean, also a title it. we've considered. Yes. <laughs> I feel the like dangling I, carrot I feel podcast. like I should get brownie points for bringing it full circle. Mm. Anyone? No, no, no. You guys don't. You yeah, don't. I'd you clap, never. Yeah. I am just the loser that's the sidekick to you two. What? <laughs> no. Wait, we've never even you're, recorded a podcast. Um, yes, and you're already sad. Yeah, you're like a reporter. I am. There's at the no Gaza rejection. Strip. There's no yeah. rejection. I'm going to be the man that needs I was constant say, validation. Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, you're our yes. you're our man in the street interview guy. Yes, like, yes. Yeah. To see how it's going uh, out there, we're going to go to summer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Summer, what do you got for us today? Oh, well, today it's a dick pic and a flurry of uh, other dick pics. Flurry of inappropriate texts. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but to answer your question. I have a question. <laughs> yes. The four skin cast. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, Holy shit. <laughs> I have, this is a real question. I've always wanted to ask this. So I want to ask this on the record. Women. You too. Not you know, <laughs> Jessica. Let's I don't want to get you in trouble, so I'll just ask Summer, and then Jessica can just nod quietly. Okay. Agree. Okay. All right. Um, do you think less of a man if the picture he sends you or the dick that he has is small? No. Mm-mm. Okay. Cool. Not so at all. I want all the men to listening to understand that that like the negging thing doesn't have to exist. A lot of these incels I feel are born from the feeling of inadequacy. Marco, look at you giving, like, good advice. I'm just, for guys, dude, I think most of these guys think that, like, you know, there's fucking, what is it? Here's, like, a... I really appreciate you bringing up that whole idea of body insecurity, though. Because, like, yeah. we, I think women, because like, we get empathy for it. It's a real thing it. for young yeah. men. It's, yes. a, it's an actual thing. Um, I will say, yeah. uh, and I think I... Sh- might have shared this with you. So maybe those um, emojis weren't that nice. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, no, but I well, No, those say- are still funny because no one asked. You know, <laughs> fuck that guy. Um, No, so there have been... <laughs> oh, maybe I there, there is a certain person that I am still seeing. Uh-huh. And, uh, and before we met, he was like, hey, look, I just want to set expectations. Matt and- Lowe. <laughs> What did we'll you call say? him Matt Lowe instead of Rob Lowe. Okay, Matt Lowe. So Matthew, um, he uh, he was like, "Hey, look, like uh, you know, I'm an average dude with an average dick." Thank yeah. God. And uh, literally, and he's like, "I just don't want you thinking you're getting some like you know Rambo dude or whatever." And I was like, "I was like, no." And and I literally like I I responded, which is he's not the first to send that text. And, and I was like, look, like I don't actually care about size. I want to know that you know what to do with what you were born with. And what is your credit score? (laughs) Yes. And also, do I need to help you find a clit? Do you live in your van? (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Yes. Do you cook out of one of those? Do you live in the van van lifestyle? (laughs) Jesus Christ. If you think van life is cool or romantic you're not getting a date. Uh, when did van life become a synonym for homeless? Yeah. Uh, uh, millennials. Right? Yeah. That's like a thing. Because I didn't believe you. You sent me that text because anyone listening was like, this guy says van life is his thing. And then I Googled it. And van life is a whole movement it is. of homelessness. <laughs> yeah. No, it's living simply, <laughs> living off the grid. It's eco-friendly. <laughs> All of this shit. Uh, but it also is hashtag homeless. How do you host a date? <clears throat> living in a van on the bench because one of those guys you sent i don't mean, i don't want to i'm not trying to dox him here but one of them was a veteran yeah and i thought to myself uh you get like pretty good uh benefits in right. terms of like your lifestyle that's how he could afford Why? the solar panels on top of his van <laughs> 
like I, it powered the car. I mean, yeah, you you feel empathy for someone who's like if they're homeless, it's like oh that sucks. Like yeah. I don't want to discount but it's the fact. Not. But that's the thing. Like yeah. this is this is something that you want to aspire to not have. I thought. Yeah, homeless yeah. isn't your first choice on the list of things I'd like to adventure on. Right? Home free. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> oh, shit. I've learned how to live off the I'm grid. Child free, home free, yes. Your home free. job free. No, but like I have, I have an RV, right? I love mm-hmm. my RV. Yeah. It's for camping. Yes. I also have a home where I have a toilet and I yeah. have a shower. Yeah. You have that in your RV. I do. Which yeah. is more than he has in his van. And you don't yes. even walk anywhere. You could just be in all of it at once. That's my okay. Here's my question though, yeah. like. So some of these RVs obviously have bathrooms and shit. And if you want to hook up in your RV, awesome. I've done it. It's great. But you need a bathroom. Like, everyone wants a bathroom afterwards. You got to take a shit somewhere. (laughs) No! I'm talking about (laughs) post-sex. Girls need to not have a shit. The post-sex shit? No shower. Oh, 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 wait. Marco, is this where you're bringing in the man perspective? Did we not know? No, like, is that you, a thing? I said you gotta take a shit somewhere. <laughs> no. And Jessica said after sex, and I was like, oh, you Marco, got the. Post-sex shit, yeah, post shit a Yeah, thing. move some shit around. I got it. Yeah, you burn some off, you know? No, stop. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta drop some weight. Oh, God. Put in the work, it happens. Being that both Jessica and I are healthcare providers, we like to, you know, bring it back to science. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. girls should be peeing after sex. It right. stops UTIs. Yeah. yeah. What happens if you're having sex in your van life date? Like, you just walk outside and squat and hope that, like, the police don't see you in the parking lot? Well, how does yeah. that differ from just when a normal day living in your van? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can exactly. pee in the van, but... No one's there. He just hands well, no. you a Seven Eleven big gulp cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big gulps, this huh? is my Gatorade bottle. I use. Can it fit you? Yeah. No. Uh, I use my old. My old. Consider. <laughs> He's like, I've got a bucket for when I need to take a shit. Ew. Yeah. Gross. With chamber pot. Yeah. I have a lot of wine <laughs> well, in here. It, it brings us back to our honey pot episode. Actually, God. a chamber pot in a van. <laughs> oh, they do. Jesus they do. Christ. It sounds very classy. Oh God. <laughs> How do my? I think uh, the, I will give my hat off to that guy. That man has a lot of self esteem. Yes, that was Good one thing him. that I kind of did notice. Is like, dude, you have way more self esteem than I ever will. Right? How did you make homelessness with your dog right, look movement. romantic? Yeah, he made yeah. it seem like it was this thing he chose to do. Yeah, right. I feel like he still didn't lead with it though. No, he didn't. He, no, it was like knew. it was to, like the period at the end of the right, sentence. By the way, intro. I live the man. Yeah, I've been to Frisco. I've been to Vegas. I've been to fucking Minnesota. I also live under the the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you, wh- what was that last part? <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean, what? Uh, yeah. Ex- excuse me. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. I live on the LA, the basin of the L.A. River. Oh, uh, isn't that just concrete? Cool, an ocean view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get a nice view of under the bridge off the beach uh, in Malibu. It's like, it's like those... white noise when I go to bed every night, too. <laughs> it's like when those, when those people try to like lead the way into the really bad thing by starting with the thing that's not so bad. It's like, look, just so we can like disclose things, like I'm not tall. I'm like 5'8". And you're like, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Then you're okay, the guy good. from Game of Thrones. You're good. Just yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, okay, so something a little short. And yeah, and you know, I've got a dog. Do you like dogs? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, and I live in a van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a pit bull. I live in a right? van, and I'm five I, two. I, I travel the United States, right. only the continental yeah, United I'm a, I'm States. I'm a professional sightseer. Well, in my van that I live in. Yeah, yes. I'm a yes. professional sightseer, and I blog. And I like the outdoors. We know that dude wasn't blogging. No, hell no. no. I'm actually surprised he had a cell phone plan to begin with. <laughs> Because I was like, "What are you making uh, this Tinder account on?" The he's got to watch his. He's got to watch his data usage. <laughs> he's on that Boost Mobile still. He, he he only parks near Starbucks. Yeah, he buys the phone from Seven Eleven in that. <laughs> no, in that fucking that's where he you stops for his big gulp. Yeah, yeah. chamber pot and urinal. You can yeah. do Tinder from the free Starbucks Wi Fi, right? Oh, that's, that's yeah, true. You can't Jesus. send texts. And can you like send dick pics from? <laughs> <laughs> Not on Tinder, yeah. um, but uh, Bumble you can, FYI, uh, because it uh, it's a platform that allows pictures 
I, I don't think the pictures were meant for dick You can't send pics. pictures on Tinder? Uh, no, not that I've found. Interesting. Uh, I have no Marco, fucking idea. do you know? I let have no see. idea. Uh, no, let me pull up my Tinder account I just, right I now. I just paste my dick pictures on like random walls. The only outside. thing I can send in the chat on Tinder is uh, GIFs. Uh, could so, you make a GIF of your dick? <laughs> Ooh, you could. But I think it would have to be public and searchable because like it's just like the GIF button. Interesting. So all these people are hooking up without knowing? Oh, no. And that's what oh, I'm telling knowing. you. Like some of these pictures are like, it, it's like uh, married, need discreet, no strings attached. And it's not even a picture of them. It's like a picture Wait, of- Is that person wearing pants? Uh, this person is wearing pants. Oh. Let me see. Uh, we can look at- um, I thought it was somebody with a shirt that just covered like their hips. Have you ever seen that when you're like, <laughs> oh, man, yeah. you pajama shirt? No, yeah, here you go. it's like the oh. right here, yeah. Javier, seven miles away from my house. He oh. actually wrote down uh, an intro. Is he in a fan? Um, where he talks about craft beer, barbecue, movies, and plenty of laughs. Looking for someone fun and spontaneous. Message me on, and then they give their Snap or their Instagram, oh, which no. is bullshit. But here followers. are the pictures we have. We oh, have a picture of beer, well. so you need- a picture of the angels, and then uh, Rams. So he, so he, he, he no angels? pictures. Yeah, I know, right? That's the thing that pisses me off. I'm like, if you you spent time to actually put an intro, which yeah. most don't, no, um, unless they're saying I'm married, don't message me. <laughs> uh, well. I'm married, let's hook up, and then don't message me. Um, But this person, like, spent three and a half minutes to write an intro, but yet still didn't put a picture of himself. Um, He likes me, by the way. I'm going to swipe left on that one. Okay, is Um, left no or is left yes? And on Tinder, it's awesome because when you swipe left, you get – do you see how it shows up as nope on it? (gasps) That's fucked up. That's so rude. Do you think so dating great. apps are causing depression or encouraging happiness? I mean, to be I honest, would say the former. No, okay. Yeah. So I've had moments where I feel super down because I'm like, God, there is nothing decent to choose from at all. And then I have moments where I'm like, okay, I'm going to approach this not like I'm looking for a life partner, but I'm just looking for some entertainment. Oh. Do, hashtag doing it for the pod. Mm. Um, <laughs> And then You've I can taken get through a it. Lot. Picks here. I've taken yeah. so many hits for you us, have. like too Took many. For the team a couple of times. Yeah, I haven't even told you about my date on Monday. I, yeah, it wasn't good. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> I would just could go on. Don't forget to subscribe to our WooCast on iTunes, Google Play, or directly on our website at whatthewoopodcast.com. You can email us at contact at whatthewoopodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. What the Woo is an educational podcast, like it actually really is, and is not a substitute for professional care and advice. Please, for the love of God, seek appropriate medical care for any health care concerns and don't rely on podcasts. Opinions expressed are solely those of the doctors and not those of any sponsors or employees. Do we have any? Hmm? <laughs>